this is Chris Cuff from 24 Flick Sports. The Philadelphia Union defeated the New England Revolution 1-0 in the knockout round of the MLS's back tournament. Here is last night's post-game press conference. Yeah, overall, uh, you know, a very professional performance uh, from the group. Uh, obviously, uh, an elimination game is something that you don't get very often. Uh, you either get it in MLS playoffs or U.S. Open Cup. Um, so to have an extra competition, to have uh, an elimination game is something that is uh, important for our young players, important for our old players uh, to experience. Uh, I thought overall uh, we handled it uh, very well in terms of how we defended as a team uh, for the course of 90 minutes. Obviously, Andre uh, made some saves again for us, which is always uh, necessary against a good team like New England. Uh, I thought that the play, uh, in particular, of our outside backs defensively was was excellent. Uh, whether it was making a tackle or a big block or a clearance, I think sometimes we, um, you know, we just expect them to be solid each and every game. So it, it's a time where I think I can single them out and, and give them a little bit of praise. You know, the job that Ray's done all competition uh, has been excellent. Uh, Kai as well. Uh, center backs have been solid. Uh, the midfield's been been clicking a little bit better and better as, as the games have gone on. Um, we still can probably do a little bit better uh, with our final ball and, and getting more goals and, and shot attempts. But um, when you look at the data, a lot of a lot more penalty area entries. So we were a little more dangerous. Uh, and overall, like I said, a, a professional performance from, from start to finish. And that's what was needed against the good New England team. Jonathan, your line is unmuted. Thank you. Good morning, Jim. How um, first of all, how's Casper? Second of all, Sergio, you sort of say one for four tonight in terms of shooting. Yeah. Uh, how important was it for him specifically to get the one? Uh, first with Casper, uh, as, as is fortunately for us so far uh, at the end of every game, it's just cramps uh, with Casper. Uh, same situation there. Uh, again, it's, it's really hot. It might not play on the TV, but it, it's very humid. So the guys, uh, uh, you know, towards the end when they're pushing so hard do have some, some muscle tightness. So he'll be fine. Uh, it's good to have an entirely healthy group. Uh, again, our, our fitness is something that we take pride in, and I think it's shown through in this tournament. Uh, Sergio had a really, probably a better look in the first half where we wanted him to continue dribbling and just have a one-on-one -on -one with Turner. He kind of pulled the trigger a little bit quick, um, but overall really happy for him to get that goal. Uh, maybe he was a little motivated because he saw uh, El Sino up on the sidelines. And he didn't. He knew he probably only had you know, one or two more uh, runs in his legs, uh, but really good finish. Uh, on a good play and, and another good goal for the union. Matt, your line is unmuted. Hey, Jim. Uh, Jamiro has the ball over the top that unhooks the defense there. What did you see from him, in uh, from Jamiro, in terms of his understanding of where those pockets of space that he's looking to get the ball in are and, and what he's been able to do with those pockets of space? Yeah, look, Jamiro is a very special player. Uh, he has the ability to make a, a final pass. And, and, you know, in the second half in particular, we got him a little higher up the field, closer to the strikers, um, you know, because when he can now receive the ball and turn and face the defense, uh, that's when they have to drop. Uh, that's when they have to make decisions. Do they do they step to him? Um, so he has a real, real quality there. So, um, you know, the thinking there, we just moved him a little higher up the field. Uh, sometimes when he's as an eight, you know, they get so much pressure to him, he can only play square and backwards. So he did a great job on the play uh, of turning and facing the defense, uh, making them drop, and then clipping a good little ball uh, in behind. And obviously Sergio uh, did the rest from there. But overall, a uh, really strong performance from Jamiro. He's been really solid, uh, both offensively and defensively. His work rate, uh, the ground he covers, I think obviously shows up uh, on the TV screen, but also with the, uh, the data and the metrics that we see, uh, just how much ground he's covering day in and day out. Your line is unmuted. Jim, you mentioned Ray and Kai a little bit in your opening statement. Um, in, in terms of just the, the little intricacies of, of what they're doing right, how, how important is it for them to be reading play, plays properly or, or get in front of balls in front of the, the box or, or in front of players to, to stop these attacks? Yeah, first of all, you know, uh, Pinilla is a great, great winger, uh, really unpredictable and dangerous. Uh, Buchanan and then, you know, Teal Bunbury. Uh, you know, same boat, you know. So what they're really great at is they, they as the ball is traveling to the winger on the ground, they're great at closing the distance uh, and, and getting so tight to them that the only option for the winger uh, is to kind of play backwards or to try to protect the ball. Uh, they do a great job of utilizing the sidelines. 
uh, as an extra defender. Uh, but overall, you know, when you talk about 1v1 defending, I don't think there's anyone better in the league than Ray. Uh, and Kai, uh, some of the clearances that he makes are, are difficult ones where, you know, balls are whipped across in the, in the penalty area and in, in the red zone, that, what we call it. Uh, and, and he's able to clear balls with good contact with his, his right foot, his weak foot. Um, just made really, really good plays on, on the entirety of the night. So um, they both have different skill sets, but I would say, uh, you know, sometimes the play of the defenders uh, doesn't get the accolades. So I, I just think it's important to single out just how well they've been for us uh, in every 90 minutes so far. Charles, your line is unmuted. Hi, Jim. Congrats on the result. Um, I, I, it seems like your team has gotten really comfortable playing against the ball when you have to um, defending shape, uh, all the cues. Could you talk a little about sort of the automation that you guys have worked on? It seems like the, the, the years together are starting to, to really show themselves. Yeah, I think, you know, look, it's no secret. We always start in a four four two diamond. Um, we have an ability to, to wear teams down a little bit uh, and then bring in, you know, El Sino and, and change to a four two three one. Uh, regardless of the formation that we're in, uh, each opponent's different, but we have pressing cues that, that, that kind of trigger our uh, ability to get to the ball uh, you know we're, we're good at pressing any straight ball that's a real cue for our guys uh, and we want the ball to be on certain parts of the field and our guys did a really good job of that tonight uh, and then it comes down to two just winning your 1v1 duels and, and uh, more times than not tonight our guys came out of those duels with the ball at their feet I thought Jose was you know he wasn't perfect with the ball but defensively he broke up a ton for us um, had a strong performance. Even Warren coming in late, uh, getting his, his foot on a couple things to break him up. So uh, defensively, I think uh, our line stayed nice and compact. Uh, we try to keep it as close to 35 yards front to back from, from Casper, our striker, to, to Mark McKenzie, our center back, uh, for the entirety of the 90 minutes. And it's proven that we're pretty tough to play through right now. And obviously it helps when you have uh, the best goalkeeper in the league to bail you out when you need them as well. So um, we take pride in defense first. Uh, and our, our good defense usually leads to our uh, chances offensively in our counters, uh, and, and tonight was no different. Happy to get a win. Michael, your line is open. Uh, hi, Jim. You mentioned during the broadcast that uh, you felt at one point you were playing with a back five and a front five right. with no levels to pass through. How how did that come about, and how do you, how easy is that to address before the quarter final that's coming up? Yeah. So what would, what happened a lot in the first half was you know Jose was was coming deep almost into the back line, so we had a level of you know five players rather than you know our outside backs being higher, creating a level in, in front of their wingers. So their front three was able to press our five, and then our reaction naturally from the the attacking players, the two strikers, uh, Brendan, Ali, and Miro was to just run in deep and, and think the only option we had was a long ball. Uh, so basically we had a bunch of guys in the front line standing there with their hands up to try to get a ball in behind. And we had a line of five in the back and, and kind of nothing in the middle. Um, you know, once we started to get our outside backs a little bit higher and then Miro started to come uh, a little bit deeper and find, find the ball. Uh, and then a couple times now, Casper created a level and came off the strikers while Sergio still occupied both center backs. Uh, a lot of little movements started to happen in the second half that gave us uh, a little more time and space, which, again, we weren't perfect on the night, but uh, it got better as the second half went, and now we have to uh, improve that now even going f further in this competition as we play uh, you know, good teams every, every time out now. That your line is open. Jim, before all this started, we talked a lot about the Open Cup as being kind of an example of a knockout competition. Being in the knockout rounds now, did, did it have a feel of an Open Cup game? Or, you know, what, what, what did it, how did it feel differently than the, the group stage tonight? Leading into it all week, we talked about it being, you know, trying to create a playoff feel to the game. Obviously, we don't have fans here. That's no secret. But um, the game still had an intensity to it. Uh, the players still had a mentality that one mistake and this thing is over. So uh, the players want to survive in advance. Uh, I think they showed that on the field. They played well. Uh, again, are there little mistakes we can still clean up? Absolutely. But, uh, again, you only get so many opportunities to play in elimination games uh, during the course of a season, and this is a, a big opportunity for us, and we want to continue to push uh, as far as possible. You know, the Open Cup, uh, MLS, like I mentioned, and then the playoffs are the two chances, and now this is a new unique opportunity for us to play uh, games of consequence, and if you lose, it's over. Last question, we'll go to Jonathan Tannenwald, your line is. Um, Jim, Jose tonight was pretty darn good on the whole, um, offensively and defensively, and sort of kept it in check 
you know, play better. Well was he that. could play better. <laughs> go ahead. And, go ahead. No, no, I said he could play better. He he was good though. He he um the first thing he said to me when he came off the field was no yellow, <laughs> which was uh <laughs> which was good. Uh I guess it's progress. Um but he's still finding that fine line of of what you can and can't get away with in this league. Um you can see how relentless he is, how much he wants to win. Um those are things you can't teach as a coach, so he has great starting points. Um you know, he uh, I think can pass a little bit sharper. If I'm being critical tonight, he can pass a little bit more forward um, and not be content just playing back to the center backs, you know, angling his body uh, to play the next pass forward, uh, something he can still work on. Um, but overall, yes, you're right, a, a good performance from him. But again, I think I've seen, I've seen him play better. So uh, I'm going to demand that from him. Hi, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Great. Um, Jonathan Tanawaldi. Unmuted. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, Jamiro, how hard was it to find those moments to break through New England's defense and on that goal with that chip pass over the top? Sort of take us through it and what you saw. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we are looking for that space uh, every minute. So uh, uh, Santos is a player that run a lot and looking for the space on the right moment and uh, we find finally uh, the moment and uh, I give a chip and uh, you make a Google. George, your line is unmuted. Hey Jack, uh, Jim had a lot of praise for the uh, for Ray and for Kai. Um, what's it been like the four of you with, with Mark working as a unit and especially against this Reds team kind of countering what they bring out wide today? Uh, yeah, obviously we've we've got a good partnership. All of us uh, spent a lot of time on the pitch together last year and uh, bring it into this year. Uh, I think we all know how each other plays and uh, especially out wide, they uh, they had a lot of pace, which which is fine for us um, with, with Ray and Kai out there. And I think we dealt with that well. Uh, they didn't didn't particularly get in behind us um, too much and um, yeah I think we we dealt with their, their threats pretty well if line is unmuted hey Jack question for you uh, how do you feel now going into the quarterfinals now after the way you guys look tonight yeah I think uh Everyone's excited for the quarterfinals. Um, you can see we, we we're playing uh, playing well together and um, fighting for everything. Uh, I think there's moments where we we can be cleaner in these games, and obviously that's there's some other factors to do with that. But uh, at the end of the day, the fight the fight within the team is uh, is always there. And I think at this point in the tournament um, and with the conditions we're facing. That's uh, that's a pretty important factor to, to winning games here. So Tansy, your line is unmuted. Jack, this is now two one nothing results for you guys. This is something we didn't see a lot from you last year. How important is it for you guys as a unit to be able to hold the, the clean sheets in, in tight games like this? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's obviously important for us um to to keep clean sheets and you you keep clean sheets you're going to win games um and i think we're we're back four and, and goalkeeper with dre and the whole team who have uh who have played together for for a while now we know uh, we know each other's strengths and uh yeah i think obviously that's a, that's a key factor to the winning games and um dre's having a hell of a tournament uh and as is a back four, um, we're doing well, trying to trying to limit opportunities um, for Dre to to have to bail us out. But uh, overall, I think as a back four and as a team, our, our defensive shape's been been good for majority of the tournament. Matt George, your line is unmuted. Jamiro, Jim talked a little bit about you changing position on the field in the second half as to where you were getting on the ball what's it like in a game like this your process of 
trying to figure out where those uh, areas are that you can be most dangerous and attack a team. Sorry again. Can you say that again? Jim talked about you moving up the field a little bit more in the second half. Um, what's it like trying to find uh, the little pockets of space in that midfield to kind of be able to uh, be dangerous when you have the ball? Uh, yeah, I think in the second half, uh, you're getting more and more space because uh, they, they're trying to score and they, they will do some something different. and. Uh, in that mo in the second half, you got more space, and uh, I think uh, when I get more space, I can uh, be more dangerous. So I think, uh, and also with the pressing, uh, when we need to defend, uh, I think I'm good in uh, press them, and uh, that's why I think he uh, put me in that uh, position. Jonathan, line is unmuted. Thank you, uh, Jack. You know, from your perspective, from the back line. You know, what do you see in terms of some of the challenges of breaking down, you know, finding the right pass to break through some of the opposing defenses that you guys have run into lately? Because you've obviously delivered a fair few of those passes over the years, too. Yeah, um, I think today, especially, they did a good job of, of making it difficult for us to play through our, through our central players um, uh, and forcing it out wide and occasionally into the channels just for for some relief but overall our, our midfield has a has good movement and ray and kai uh, get up get up well and are easy to find so i think uh for us at the back me and mark um i think we we're, we're capable of finding a player every time uh, and if not uh, we've got sergio running in behind with um extreme pace i mean uh, that's that's always an outlet for us, but we definitely try and play through. And if it's not on, we go long. Matt Ralph, your line is open. Jack, you know uh, Sergio is the first to score two goals uh, this season for the team. You know, seeing how you know night in night out, you have so many different players with the ability to get goals, with the ability to st to step up. You know what do you, what do you think that says about the team that you know in terms of planning against the team you can't really focus too much on one player because someone else is going to beat you. Yeah, it's uh, it's difficult for other teams to really really target a guy on our team um, and stop them from getting the ball because everyone's capable of scoring uh, and everyone's capable of making a final pass in uh, in our front four front six especially. Um, I think that that makes it extremely difficult to to play against us, um, knowing that Casper's clinical and Sergio's always going to be running you in behind and and being dangerous. Uh, it's definitely a, a problem for for teams to really focus on someone, um, especially when everyone can play score. Last question. We'll go to David Melandry. Your line is open. So this question is for. Either one of you guys, can you talk about your previous experiences in the knockout rounds, especially with the being a part of the Open Cup, the U.S. Open Cup in the past? How does that experience help you guys going forward? Um, yeah, obviously, last year we we got our first first playoff win in uh, against New York at home, and, and that was incredible. But uh, we're we're looking for a lot more than that. Um, after disappointment in Atlanta, uh, I think we've definitely got the capa capabilities and the, and the squad to go far in this tournament now. Um, tough effort. Just want to get you guys' initial reaction, especially given the uh, the way that the second half started. Uh, certainly on the front foot. Also, Jim Curtin at the hydration break could be overheard on the mic saying. Uh, they're exhausted. Um, any truth to that at, at that point, at that stage in the game, and, and just overall reaction to to the way the game developed? Are we are we tired after our, our fourth game in heat and humidity? Of course we are. I don't think that showed at all. 
Uh, I thought we played well. I thought we defended pretty well. I didn't think that they had, if they had chances, they were half chances. And if anything, Matt made good saves coming out uh, or our defenders cleared it pretty well. I, I disagree with that statement, but look, I think we take positives from this, that we, we were able to work hard. And I thought we were on the front foot, like you said, uh, on the beginning of the second half, definitely at the end of that second half. So um, we take this and we go forward. Uh, we take this as in the tournament, uh, we had the games that matter, we got points. Frank, we're going to try you again. Um, can you hear, hear me, Frank? Yeah, how's that? Great, thank you. Yeah. No, no luck? No, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, Kellen or, or Tony, just uh, can you talk about it? Was, was it seemed to be a frustrating game and kind of a, a good example of that was it looked like he had a breakaway. You guys were, were counterattacking and instead of a quick turnover and they score. I mean, how frustrating was that game? Uh... I mean, uh, of course, uh, there was a lot of times, I think, during the, especially the second half, we have a good opportunity, but you also have to give the, the, the opposition team credit. I think they, they really did a good uh, uh, thing at dropping and, uh, and, and anticipating our plays. And look, uh, the mistakes will happen. It, it was hard to play out there, uh, really hit and, uh, hot and humid. And uh, unfortunately, we did, uh, we did a mistake, but... Um, Still, I think when when we're gonna look at the tape, how we how we can see the goal, we'll we'll definitely see that we could we could have done much better defending. And but still, uh, you know, this is a good lesson for all of us. Uh, and uh, now that we go back home, we'll have a we'll have some some work to do and uh, try to improve things uh, to, to prevent of happening in the future. Okay, next question, Alonso Velasquez, you are unmuted now. Yes, hello to both of you. What are some positives that you can take from this tournament and perhaps, you know, um, to improve for the regular season coming up? That we got points in every game that counted towards the season play. That's, that's, that's amazing. Um, you know, a win in two ties in, in the, the games that matter towards the season, that's great for us. Uh, that's what we wanted. We got out of the group just like we wanted. Uh, I think it's positive that we created a lot of chances. The next part is, is to finish the chances. Uh, and that comes with time. It comes with getting to know each other. It comes with playing multiple games and getting those chances uh, and, and getting guys like Adam Buxa, like Gustavo Bo, even when Carlos comes back, Kristen Pania, those guys get them chances in front of goal. And once they continue, they're like they're forwards. They're, they're going to have streaks and we're going to find those streaks for them. Uh, I think positively we, we didn't give up many goals uh, during this tournament. I think it's credit to Tony, to Andrew, to, to Henry when he came in uh, and he played the last game, and, and Michael Mancian, as well as, as the six and eight that we had every time. It's, it's amazing that we were able to come together this quickly and play this, uh, play this well tactically. So we're gonna, take, we're gonna go back, watch the film, do everything we need to do, but I think there's many positives we can take. Hi, thank you, Kellen. Um, Julian Cardillo, next question. Um, you're unmuted now. Hey guys, um, you know, where do you kind of go from here? Uh, just based on uh, it's the end of a tournament, but um, in all likelihood, people are talking about the season coming back. There's no set timetable for that yet. How do you kind of, you know, put this tournament on the shelf and move on to the next thing? Uh, well, I think all, all the teams will be in the same position. Uh, I think we'll get a couple of days off, but then, uh, uh, like I said before, uh, go back at, at watching the games, in, in, uh, improve the mistakes we made, and um, and train hard. I think this is this is the, the only way now to to be prepared, because because obviously we can't play any friendly games. We'll have to 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 do more uh, uh, games inside a team. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, I think that's that. That's the main focus right now. Go back or f first rest and then g get back to full training. Thank you, Antonio. We have time for one or two more questions. If anyone else wants to get a um, question in the queue, I'm Dylan. Um, I am unmuting you now. Thanks. This is a uh, um, for for Callan. Um, was it a little bit confusing there at the end that that you uh, you guys aren't able to take the corner? Like you guys win it. It's 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 time is coming down, but oftentimes you know you, you kind of let that last play happen. Um, was that I guess a little bit frustrating for you guys? 
I mean, was it confusing? No. Was it frustrating? Of course. Um, you want to get another chance to get the ball in the box, and it just didn't happen. Now, we were, we were probably, I don't know what the time was. It's on the ref's clock. We may have been 30 seconds past already. I have no idea. So it's up to the ref's discretion. He called the whistle, and that was it. Unfortunately, we got to get on with it. We're not, it's not like we're looking back at that and saying we would have won the game in that corner. Maybe we would have. We tied it back up. We had many chances beforehand. We're going to look at those and say we got to finish those. So was it frustrating? Of course.